Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Peace and the mercy and blessings of God be with you all. Hello uh, and welcome to another book review. Today I am doing a review of the New American Bible, Revised uh, Edition, St. Joseph uh, Edition. Uh, why this uh, book? Well, uh, many uh, of you who are interested in comparative religion have asked me what uh, Bible would I recommend for Muslims to get if they are interested in a comparative study. And this one is an excellent one. So uh, why this particular one? Well, this is a Catholic Bible to begin with. And uh, I should explain that uh, Catholics and, and Roman Catholics and, and Protestants uh, share basically most of the, of the Bible. So the Protestant Bible has 66 uh, individual books. And uh, the Catholic Bible, which I now hold in my hand, uh, has seven additional books uh, for a total of 73. Uh, so uh, 66 of these uh, individual documents are shared by both Catholics and Protestants. So basically, this Bible will be useful to both Catholics and, and Protestants. And if you're in dialogue with uh, a Christian friend, uh, there's no you know, hesitation in pulling out this Bible and using it as a basis for discussing things. And then if your Protestant friend says, well, oh, that particular book, that's not in my Bible, well, then you can leave that one alone for the discussion and move on to the books which are common to both. Uh, now, this one here is uh, authorized uh, by the Board of Trustees of the Confraternity of Christian Doctrine and approved by the Administrative Committee of the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops. Uh, so it, it comes with uh, a good recommendation and uh, approval. Now, uh, at the beginning, there is uh, a helpful document uh, that will help uh, um, uh, Muslims in particular. Uh, to understand something of the Bible, about the Bible. So we have here, for example, learning about your Bible, right in the introduction. So it tells you about the authors of the Pentateuch. The Pentateuch is a reference to the first five books of the Bible, which commonly are referred to as the Torah. And Muslims uh, believe in the Torah that was revealed to Musa, alayhi salam, to Moses. However, in the introduction here, they tell us uh, about the history of how the present Torah came to be compiled how in about uh, 950 BC, uh, there was uh, a story of, of creation and uh, some other stories of uh, Israelite history. About a century later, another school of writers uh, in the Northern Kingdom of Israel uh, wrote uh, another version of the story. And eventually uh, around the year 550 BC, uh, the two stories were compiled together uh, by priests who added their own cement or glue uh, to the stories to mesh them together. And that created the, um, the, the Torah as we have it now. And uh, a fourth book called the, uh, the, a fifth book, which is called Deuteronomy, that was added as, as well. And so we have this theory, which the scholars refer to uh, by the acronym JEPD, uh, the, the J for, for, uh, the Yahweh's version, uh, E for the Elohist version, P for the priestly editions, and D for, D for uh, uh, Deuteronomy. Uh, this uh, is, is uh, a theory that is widely used nowadays in interpreting at least uh, the, the Torah and, and the, the rest of the, um, uh, the Deuteron Deuteron Deuteronomic uh, history uh, in, in the Bible. Uh, so that's a very interesting and useful sort of introduction, but other such helpful hints are also provided uh, in this uh, introductory material. Now, within the Bible itself, you will find uh, many useful uh, notations. So if you go to the New Testament, for example, Muslims are very interested in the Gospels. So there's an introduction to the Gospels, how the Gospels came to be written, the relationship among the Gospels. Uh, for example, you have three Gospels, which are called Synoptic Gospels, uh, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. And uh, scholars have been puzzled about the relationship uh, among them. And um, uh, so it's explained here, the first three of the canonical Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, are so similar at many points when viewed together, particularly when arranged in parallel columns or lines, that they are called Synoptic Gospels, from the Greek word from, uh, for such a general view. The fourth gospel often differs significantly from the synoptics in outline and approach. So uh, they, they start by explaining that. And then within the discussion of the gospels themselves, 
One would often find uh, detailed footnotes at the bottom, which serve as commentary uh, on, on the biblical passages. And uh, in this commentary, you will often find how uh, details about how Matthew and Luke, in using Mark as their source, uh, they have modified and uh, improved uh, the story along Christian lines. So when one is reading the stories, therefore, one will have to bear in mind this evolution of the story among the Gospels, from Mark to Matthew and Luke, and then eventually uh, to the Gospel according to John. You will also find in this uh, text uh, many useful um, not notations as to uh, additions that have been made into uh, the Bible by people in later centuries. For example, uh, in 1 John chapter 5, verse number 7, uh, it used to say that, uh, at least in the King James Version of the Bible, uh, that there are three that bear record in heaven, the, the Father, uh, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and that these three are one. However, it has been uh, notate, uh, notated in this Bible uh, that uh, that passage which uh, speaks thus is not an original passage in, in the Bible. In fact, that uh, is something that had been uh, added into uh, the, the Bible by some uh, later hand. And uh, the original would uh, uh, not lead to that Trinitarian uh, type of uh, formulation. So it is very interesting to uh, look at this uh, Bible, uh, to read its details, and uh, to follow its, its guide. Uh, without uh, the, the commentary, the Bible may be uh, sometimes difficult to understand. Uh, but uh, the commentary makes it easier for, under, for, for one to understand. Now, the commentary on the, on the Bible is not as essential as the commentary on the Quran. So Muslims should be aware of this. The Quran uh, has this elusive style, which requires a lot of commentary. The, much of the Bible is understandable on its own. So you can keep reading the Bible. You're reading the New Testament, for example, Gospel according to Matthew. It's giving you the story of Jesus in detail. It's when you want to know something in more detail, uh, that is when you're going to look at the footnotes, when you're going to look at the commentary. If something is puzzling to you, then you have a handy reference work here uh, that will be easy for you to uh, find the details in. So this is uh, a book that has been a constant reference for me. It's a bit of a hefty volume. I, I don't like the fact that it's so heavy. And uh, I wish they could uh, make it lighter, but uh, of course they can't give me all the details that they do and still make it a lighter book. So there's a bit of a trade-off here. Uh, and uh, I, you know, I don't like the fact that this one is a soft cover, but uh, that also makes it handy and easy to use as opposed to some hard covers, which are you know, stern and, uh, and difficult to maneuver. But uh, all said, uh, this is a book that has been very important to me. I found myself uh, looking back at it and referring to it uh, over the uh, decades. And uh, it has changed my life. And I hope that uh, it will have an impact on yours as well. Perhaps it may even change your life. Thank you for watching. I'm your brother in faith, Shabi Rali. Assalamu alaikum. Peace be with you. My dear friends, I want to appeal to you to support the important work we're doing this Ramadan. Visit QuranSpeaks.com and click Donate. May God reward you for your generosity and may you have a blessed Ramadan.